Hey everyone, and welcome to another video that is dedicated to the new AI masking in Photolab 9. And if you watched my What's New in Photolab 9 video, you will have seen me doing some work with this image just in the background, not really talking about what I was doing. So I want to do a quick video where I just really briefly show you what I applied to this because it actually highlights a few different techniques quite quickly. So let's jump in and take a peek. So this image is a production still from a live theater show. And, you know, it's it's basically I've got a few adjustments on it there. Just wait till I press escape. Um, it was quite, and in fact, the stage was quite red. It was meant to be inside a, a cabin. Um, so that's how it was originally lit. But I've just kind of changed it a little bit to be a bit um, kinder to those skin tones. And we'll kind of see how we go with that. But just if we take a look at a few techniques. So in the first instance, we've got a bit of disparity here. Um, stage lighting is quite tricky in terms of, of you know evenness across people, etc. Lots of times. So we've got him quite bright and him a bit dark. And so what I did was, first of all, to brighten him up. And I'm just already in the local adjustments area. And I've come over here to this button, which is for the AI masking. Let that do a think for a second. And I'm going to just come across here to the different categories. And I'm going to select subject. So the first thing that this can highlight to you is that you can select subject in such a way, but you don't need to accept that wholesale. So these two buttons here are about adding and subtracting two selections. So I'll choose the subtract one and I will get over top of the second person. Now I'm going to be quite sloppy there. You see, in order to get all of the second person, I actually need to encroach on the first person, but it is smart enough to sort that out. So I'll go ahead and just let go of that and it will adjust the mask accordingly. That's step one. And of course, one of the big things I want to do here is just to raise the exposure on this guy a little bit just so he looks a bit more evenly exposed to the other guy so we'll go somewhere around there now one of the things about this is you know, and i think that this happens quite a lot with ai masking just in general not specific to um, dxo is is there's there's an evenness there that probably wouldn't be there you know this this probably wouldn't have lightened up as much so i then added to this and for clarity's sake, let me just highlight because this structure is a bit different here. This is the mask and these are the parts of that mask that are going together. So I've got the main subject mask and then I've got a, a minus of the other dude right there. So if I want to continue to add to that, I'm going to stay within this mask sphere um, and I can pop it up there if I want to. And I'm going to just grab a graduated filter. I'm going to take it away from this side a bit. So I'm just going to pop that on and I'm going to pull it out like this. And right now you can see that it sort of automatically lit this up here because it's now including it. So what I'm going to do is use this, which is one of the handiest buttons in here, which is invert shape that is basically going to then subtract. So anytime I invert the shape, it's going to subtract that piece. So I do that. And now if I shift this around, you can see how I'm bringing that shadow up the side of his face there. So I just need to decide where's the spot that I want that to be. And then I can go ahead and, and let that be. Now also within this overall mask structure, again, I'm still on that single mask, which is of him. And you can see there how that, that graduated filter is taking it away from the backside. Um, if I look at that hand, that hand has gone a bit hot. So I'm going to just come up here to a control point and I'm going to drop a control point on there, which selects the hand now, uh, by its nature, as I add the control point, it's just sort of adding to the mask in a place where the mask already was. So that's not really helpful. But again, coming up here to this, again, the handiest of buttons, the invert, means now it's going to take it away from that space. So if I just on and off only the control point, it's just brought that down just that little bit, just to make that sit a little bit better exposed. So the structure of that being that I've created an AI mask, and then I've used AI masking to subtract from that. And then I've used a graduated filter to subtract from that. And then I've used a control point to subtract from that. So you've got a massive amount of flexibility in what you're doing there. And now another thing that I want to do is I'm just going to close that 
up and I'm going to do a new mask. So now I'm entering into a, a new space here. And I want to just bring a bit more of that warmth back to the background. Less so on the guys. I'm just going to try to find a little bit of balance there. So that I, again, just thinking about those skin tones. So I'll drop that on and I'll come back up here to the categories. And I'll choose, in this case, background. And it does, uh, after it thinks for just a second, it does a great job of that. And I know that currently that book is selected. So I'm going to grab my minus tool here and I'm just going to come over top of that book see what it gets there we go I needed to tweak that a little bit in order for it to get the book and I'll also bring it over top of this just because it's all kind of encompassed so there now I've got a great selection of just the background with those two bits removed and then if I want to and of course you could do whatever but if I want to warm that up a little bit I can bring a bit of that color back in there and I won't fuss that too much but that's you kind of get the get the general idea so we truly have a, a great ability to manipulate to add to subtract to change the way masks uh, are working and to do that super quickly it's in my opinion really well designed biggest trick is to if you if you want more in-depth on this uh, I'll do a video that is sort of a, a getting started with the AI masking, but we've got this invert shape, which works on everything. Um, and then we've also got this, which is invert mask, which is a different thing. For brevity, I won't go into that here. But if you have that concept, that concept, and then how these are structured with masks and then, and then sub bits that make them up, etc., then you'll be away and cooking and it's all quite quick. If you found that helpful, I'll put a link in the description to a playlist of new Photolab 9 videos. Check out that playlist and hopefully I can teach you more about using the AI masking in Photolab 9. Thanks for watching and I'll talk again soon.